finished its seventh mission scanning the ocean floor, searching for missing Malaysia Flight 370. And a lot of the area it is scanning is truly uncharted territory. Yeah, as it turns out, what little we do know of the area could actually help searchers. Uh, Christina Simons, who worked with film director James Cameron on the Deep Sea Challenge, spoke to CNN yesterday about this area. Well, so this is a bathymetric map of the seafloor. It's on land we would call it a topographic map that represents elevation. And it's no different on the seafloor. The Zenith Plateau, where they've been focusing the search, indicated there by the red box, it stands about a mile and a half, two miles above the surrounding seafloor. And they're operating just on the north slope. The, the red box indicates an area about equal to 100 square miles to give you some sense for what they've, what they've about uh, completed surveying. So it, it's a large area. We don't, this isn't a very detailed map, so we can't account for small changes and, and, and rocky, rocky surfaces. But we, our best guess is that it's covered with sediment, which is good for trying to find a debris field or, or a man-made object on the seafloor. So the Bluefin 21, this vehicle scanning for any trace of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, is in the water now for the eighth time. Up to 11 military planes, 12 ships are also in on the search today. But the weather, that's the problem. It's certainly not helping. A nearby cyclone is making for some windy and rainy conditions. CNN's Miguel Marquez rode along with a crew that's played an integral role in that surface search. And here's his report. Another day, another search, another hope of finding something, any scrap of debris related to Malaysian Flight 370. It's our mission to find it. We want to be the crew that does find it, but uh, it's, it takes time. Captain Tim McElvery, some 30 search flights under his command, has been everywhere from the South China Sea to the Straits of Malacca and now here, a thousand miles off the Australian coast. It's roughly analogous to uh, Canadian border to Mexican border. Is the distance we've flown for uh, two and a half hours on station and then uh, climb out now. This New Zealand crew in a P-3 Orion, it's classified and sophisticated equipment made for hunting enemy submarines, stare at screens and at the sea. Flying at times just 200 feet above the water, the plane's wingspan 100 feet. They spot just about everything. Yeah, but that's the nature of the game. Um, we're looking for absolutely anything that could possibly be MH370. In past sorties, they've seen more examples. What's this? A tangled fishing net or a tangle of straps from an airplane cargo hold. This crew, the first so far to see an item and successfully direct a ship to pluck it from the ocean. We patrolled and uh, detected a small red object that we believe to be not more than one meter by one meter. The Australian naval ship Perth responded from 20 miles away. It launched a team in an inflatable raft. The P-3 had enough fuel to stay on the scene and direct them to the object. It was a large bread basket or bread tray, the, the kind that you would typically find in a, in a, uh, a supermarket holding um, 20 loaves of bread. Not from MH370. Another frustration, the mission goes on. And Miguel joins us now live from Perth, Australia. Miguel, do we have any sense uh, of how this search is going? Well, it's certainly not stopping anytime soon, at least uh, under the ocean. The surface search has been said that it will stop soon, but uh, I don't think any country wants to, to back out of that. The, uh, the Bluefin 21 continues sort of in concentric circles, it sounds like, or something along those lines. Uh, covering that area of about 200 square miles of the ocean floor there, a little over halfway through that now in this eighth search. We'll find out how much uh, of that they got through as well, but they are moving toward the most uh, likely point uh, of the area where the strongest ping came back from back on uh, April 8th. Randy? Miguel Marquez, uh, thank you very much.